I know it's been a long time since I've posted a video. Uh, there's been a lot going on. Uh, had another baby, bought a house, so it's been just crazy. But I wanted to get back into it, and I thought uh, a good topic to cover quickly would be recursion. Uh, I want to make a quick caveat right out the gate that recursion is not something that you should typically use. So if you find yourself using it, that you should definitely question uh, what it is that you're doing and whether or not you need to use it. With that said, uh, let's jump right into it. What is recursion and when would you want to use it? So the general idea behind recursion, and I have a uh, function here that I've already set up and I'll just jump into it and then we'll all recreate it step by step here in a minute. Uh, but the general idea of recursion is that you need to iterate through something in a fairly unlimited way until you come up with a result that you uh, want. But um, you may not want to load everything that you're iterating through in all at once. So um, the general setup of a recursive function call is that you have a function that calls itself. So notice that this function's name is find closest enemy, and this is just the reference version of it. Um, so find closest enemy reference, and notice here at the end that I check this local variable closest actor, and if it's valid, then I return it. But if it's not valid, I it's set to none, it's uninitialized. Uh, then I return the result of another call to this method. So it's actually calling the method that we're inside of. So we're inside of this and it's calling it. And that can obviously be dangerous because if you were to call the method that you are inside um, and it never found anything, it would just loop and loop and loop and loop and it would crash your program. So the other important part of a recursive function call is an exit condition. So in this case, I've added a check volume, just a volume sphere to the uh, thing. It's actually zero, so you can't see it. Um, and in here, I increase its size. And when its size gets above a certain value, I set it to like 50,000 here, then we're just going to, when it's larger than that, just return null. Say, nope, we've looked as far as we're gonna look. We're not looking any farther, exit. And you want to make sure that this is present so that it escapes if it gets into a loop where it's not finding what you're looking for. Um, so let's let's talk about the setup, what we're trying to do here with this recursive function and why you would use this over a, a for loop or, a, or a, another iterative uh, code section. So in this case, we've got our little ball. I've called it an actor. That's this one here. Um, and I've got all these enemies, say, there again, these enemies are just empty. There's no code in them. They're just spheres with point lights on them set to red. Um, and suppose, and in, in this case, I've only got maybe a, a couple dozen out there, but if you had, say, thousands of these swarming around and you needed to, for some reason, know which one was closest, um, you might use a for loop and just get all actors of class and then loop through each of them one at a time until you've found the closest one comparing the distance. Um, but to do that, if you have 10,000, that means that you're going to be loading a for loop up with an array of 10,000 items, which can be quite memory heavy. So what you might think is, well, I'll just put a little volume around my character and um, we'll just look inside that volume. But what happens if there isn't one inside that volume. So then you can either have multiple volumes or you can try within the volume and if you don't find within one in the volume, then you load all of them in or some combination of that, right? And you can, I'm sure there's many, many, many creative ways to solve that. But one way to solve that would be to use recursion. Um, in this case, what we'll do is we will check inside the volume and if there is any inside the volume, then we will re compare uh, the distance between any of them in, inside the volume and return the closest. If there is none inside the volume, then we will run it again. And importantly, at the beginning of the function, we increase the size of the volume. And that in turn will also be our exit condition. So we'll go ahead and jump right in and uh, I'll set that function up. So let's close out of this reference one in the event graph. So what we'll do is we'll be calling it here and 
if we find it, then we'll turn its light to green, and if we don't find any enemies whatsoever, then we'll just print a log, you know a log string that says we didn't find any enemies. So let's create a new function, and we'll call this find closest enemy. And just to set this up ahead of time, what we're going to do is we're going to call it here. We need it to have an output that is an enemy enemy object reference and what we're going to do is we're going to get point should be yeah, right there and we're just going to set color we're going to go ahead and make a linear color and we'll just set that to green I think I think that's how that works just like that oh and we want to check is valid and we want to do this execution one uh, it's just a short shorter version of doing a, a branch with if is valid um, and if it's not valid we want to print a string that says no enemy found so this is what we're going to be doing now this is of course an empty function so let's fill it out so um, I am setting the check volume starting radius to zero so let's go ahead and set this up and I'll go ahead and put the comment sections in now so the first thing we need is um, an exit condition in case uh, we don't have any enemies in the level it can't find any we don't want it to spiral out of control and then we will have our um, return value or cursive call so we're going to return a value or a recursive call. And uh, right here, we will just have our operations. So whatever we're doing inside this function. And so now what we need to do is expand this. So we have two cases. Uh, we're going to add a local variable here. And this is going to be called um, closest enemy. Hey, how are you doing? That's my kiddo. Okay, sorry for the cut. Uh, my kiddo just came in after his nap here. So um, what I was saying, oh yeah, so we are going to create a local variable uh, and this local variable needs to be of the enemy object reference type. That's what we're gonna be re uh, returning eventually if it's valid. And so what we'll do is we'll just check is valid, are you valid? And what we want to do is if it's is valid, uh, then we can just go ahead and return it. But uh, first, just in case, for cleanliness sake, in case we ever were to call this again, what we want to do is uh, set the radius back to zero. Set, set sphere radius to zero, just like that. Um, this execution, I'm going to detach that. So if, if this is valid, then let's go ahead and clean up, set our sphere back to zero, and we will return it. If it's not valid, what we want to do is we want to actually make a call to the method that we are in. And return that value, whatever comes out of it. So what will happen if, uh, we go down this route is it will call this and then whatever value comes out of here will go into the return node inside of here if you were to open this up you just find this and if in its loop it found something that was valid it would return it it would come out here and go there if not it would go in one layer deeper so this just goes deeper and deeper down uh, well this is going to be a problem if it spirals out of control so we need to set up our exit condition um, in this case what we want to do is um, and if you hold B down and click it'll put a branch we want to say uh, greater than greater than with flute and we'll say 50,000 and uh, what we're checking against is the check volume get radius get sphere radius if we're greater than 50,000, then we just want to um, return. 
and I'm not going to put any input in here. I just want to return null. So we've gone through, we've looped for 50,000. We could go 500,000, doesn't matter. Whatever the bounds of your game is, you want to set it so that it, it checks everything in, the, in those bounds. And if it doesn't find anything in those bounds, then it returns. If uh, it's not greater than that amount, then what we want to do is uh, set sphere radius to, uh, actually we can use this value, plus, and we'll go ahead and increment it by, I don't know, what's a good amount, 500. Uh, if you're getting too many out, you know, you're being swarmed and, and you're getting, you know, 5,000 enemies within your radius, then maybe increment by 100 because you're probably going to catch something in that that increment. Um, oh, this goes inside of operations, I'm sorry. So this is what we're actually doing as to check which one's closest. So um, we've obviously not found one yet at this point because uh, we just got into the method or it's in another loop, which means that the last loop didn't find one. So uh, this will be not set within the scope of this function call, this inner function call here. And we need to uh, see if we can find one inside the current radius that's smaller. So what we're going to do is do um, get overlapping actors for the check volume. I'm going to move this a ways out here just to give us some space. And then we'll do for each, do a for each loop. And when it's completed, then we can come into here and do that check. And while it's looping, I'll just slide this box up to give us some space. What we want to do is see whether or not uh, the iteration of this loop, the actor is closer. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, is, get this, is valid. So have we found any of them yet? If not, then, so if you haven't set this at all yet, um, then we can just set closest. You can also hold Alt while you're dragging this out and get the set. So just set this. Oh, we have to cast. I'm sorry. If it's not valid, cast to an enemy. So basically treat this as an enemy, which we already know it will because I'm going to get... I'm going to filter for only the enemy class here because that's all we care about. So we don't have to worry about the cast failure because it shouldn't ever fail properly. We should log, hey, something went wrong. Um, so yes, so here's the case where we're in the loop. So we know we found something and it's looping and it's checking. It says, oh yeah, this has never been set yet. So we can say, well, if it's never been set yet, then this is going to be the closest in this loop. If it has been set, then what we need to do is compare distances. So we'll get um, get distance to and we can do greater than and then copy that. So what we want to know is whether or not the distance to, uh, actually let's do less than because it's, that fits the scenario. So what we want to know is, is the distance between ourselves and this guy less than the distance between um, ourselves and whatever this is currently set to which we know will be something because it's valid up here. Um, and we'll do, um, can't type today, a branch. So if it's valid and uh, the iteration on this loop, so as we're looping through this element is closer to us than whatever closest enemy is currently set to, then what we want to do is set this element to the closest enemy. So I'll copy this. Cast uh, to enemy. Move this over even further. Okay, so here we go. To review, we're looping. If nothing is set here, then we'll just go ahead and set it because 
we know that it's going to be the closest if it's the first one, the closest yet if it's the first one. Once it's been set for the, each additional element, it's going to check the distance. If it's closer than the previous one that was set to this local variable, then we set it to this new close one O. Yes, like that. All right. So that should get us a local variable that is either uh, null. So if there's nothing overlapping, then it will just complete immediately and drop down here, in which case this will remain null. Or it will set it to whichever of the overlapping is the closest. And then down here, if it is null, then we just re we call it again and return the result of that. And if it is set, then we set the sphere radius to zero in cleanup and return that value. On the event graph, if it comes back null, then we just say there's no enemy found. Uh, right? And if it is not null, then we set the point light color to green. I hope this works. Uh, it could be that I just introduced a bug. I tested the reference. I haven't tested this, obviously. So what we're going to do is test it. Yep, that's the closest. Play. And that's the closest. And it should work even at great distance because it uh, up to 50,000 away. Play. There's that one. Flip the camera around. I'm not sure why. Um, something useful here, I guess, will be I'll jump in and I'll print after we set this Sphere, sphere radius, I will uh, print a string. Let's print the actual distance so we can actually see what's going on here. And interestingly, uh, you should see that they print in reverse. So normally um, it prints from the top and it pushes them down. So you'd expect the lowest one to be the highest, or sorry, the lowest value. And I, I believe it should be in reverse to that. So let's lengthen the amount that it. So 10 seconds. So the first thing, oh no, it's doing it in a reasonable order here. So the first thing you see is a thousand and then it's going up. So that's how many loops it actually iterated through. Um, and actually there's a couple loops before that. Again. You can see that it's doing this many times, but once it finds one, it returns it out of there. So that's recursion. It's important to know that uh, for most things, if you have a reasonably small set of uh, things that you are iterating through, you should use a for loop. If the condition um, for exit is simple enough, then you should consider a while loop because recursive calls actually add a, a new function call to the call stack every time. Um, unless it has tail call recursion, which I think is unlikely in Unreal Blueprint printing here. So it'll probably be adding a, another function call to the call stack each time, um, which can be expensive in terms of time. So the more loops that it goes through, the more loops it has to go through before it finds something at the bottom to bring up through all of those loops, the more expensive it will be. Um, but the trade-off is if you think that it's likely that it will find something in a small finite set of iterations, then it can be much more performant than loading in all of the actors of class if you have thousands of them. Uh, I hope this was at least somewhat helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, um, I'll catch you next time. Thanks so much.